Hey guys, today we're going to take the gear hub off of a Hummer H1. Uh, I'm kind of doing this all backwards. I've already gone through here and replaced the springs. I put the uh, adjustable shocks in from uh, GT. I've already replaced the ball joints. I've replaced the tie rod ends. Uh, all the uh, sway bar linkage has been replaced. And uh, now it's time to uh, go back and do it all over again and take the gear hub off. Now on my last truck, I took these off and it was, it's kind of hard to do on your own. I mean, this thing weighs all close to 100 pounds while it's up there. And I see a lot of people, uh, you know, trying to balance uh, this thing on a, on a floor jack or, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting pretty old. So I don't need to be manhandling these things around. And this truck is pretty clean, but some of these things can get really grungy and they're hard to hang on to. So this time, uh, what I'm excited about is I made this fixture. Uh, hopefully this thing is going to work. It's going to assist in holding up this uh, gear hub. Once I get all the other things taken apart, this thing right here should just roll right up. And I should be able to just put that on like that and put a couple nuts to hold that on. And then I put these uh, speed nuts on here, which you push the button and... You can slide those back and this whole thing pivots back because this gear hub you've got to tilt it back a little bit to get it off that lower ball joint so i'm kind of hoping this thing works i'm going to try it out once i get all the other stuff off i will uh, uh hook this thing up and get the ball joints loose and see if uh this thing helps hold the gear hub up for me so i don't have to uh while i'm the reason I'm taking this off is because I'm getting ready to do the uh, 12K half shaft upgrade kit. I'm still waiting on the rear shafts. They would be right here. I'm waiting for those to come from AM General. But I already got the bearings pressed on the gears and replacing all the hardware. Uh, I got the seal kits. I went ahead and made some uh, uh, half inch thick aluminum uh, gear hub covers because I wanted to put the sight glass in them. They're not as cool as the ribbed fancy ones that you pay a lot of money for, but uh, got a machine shop, so these didn't cost anything to make. So um, another little tool I came up with was this is the uh, access plug that goes right here to get to the end of the half shaft nut. And they say you're supposed to put a 3 8 drive in there and just take it and spin that thing out but the problem is it's really really sloppy and it tears them up uh, I don't like that so I took this uh, 3 quarter inch bolt or 5 8 bolt right here and machined it down and made a really nice fitting uh, tool that I can get in there and just put a wrench on it and get that out of there without damaging it and it fits a lot nicer I'm a little OCD that way but anyway uh, we're going to start by uh, taking off all the other stuff that needs to come off before uh, this gear hub can come off. So things like the vent line, tie rod, uh, the half shaft comes out. I can take that plug out right there. There's a bolt underneath there. You take those six bolts out way in the back. Uh, once you do that, the half shaft just kind of slips out. And um, that's about it. I'm going to take all that stuff off. I'm not going to bore you with that part of the video. It's pretty straightforward. And we'll come back when I'm ready to put that fixture on here and pop these ball joints loose and see if this uh, contraption actually works. When you take these half shaft bolts out, it's helpful if both wheels in the front or the rear are off the ground. That way it's easier to rotate this thing around and uh, get all six bolts out. At the same time, when you go to loosen these bolts, the, uh, the half shaft wants to rotate because the other wheel is free. So what I usually do is just keep a 2x4 handy and just jam a 2x4 into there so the tire can't rotate. Take two bolts out, move the 2x4, rotate to the next one, and just keep doing that. And it makes it a whole lot easier to get all six of those bolts out and uh, makes this thing a breeze to take out. Okay, once your half shaft is out, this rotor is just barely going to hang on this... Uh, on this flange right here. So what I usually do is take a bolt that's a little bit shorter or the same thread pitch, put a couple regular washers on it, and just put that into one of the holes and tighten it up. One's all you need and as you're moving things around this keeps your rotor from falling off and getting wedged down in here and you know stretching out your uh, pistons and your uh, brake caliber and all that stuff. So 
just a little insurance to keep that thing in place while you're doing everything else. Okay, so I got the uh, got the half shaft off, and comparing it from the 10K to the 12K, you can see there's a substantial size difference in the spline, and the uh, the main shaft here is about a sixteenth of an inch bigger than this one is here. Uh, now this is a uh, this is a 2000 uh, open top. And I did an ABS delete on this thing about a year ago, so I no longer need the toe ring, uh, the tone rings, on the new half shaft. So I saved money by buying the uh, kit that's like 92 through 98 because I don't need these anymore, and uh, all that ABS stuff is gone. Now these uh, six bolts came out uh, between the Loctite and the Nordlock washer. Uh, they pretty much fight you all the way down to the last thread, and when you're doing this, you want to replace these. Uh, these Nord wash, Nordlock washers, once these back out, uh, it defeats the purpose of what they were designed to do. So you, you're supposed to throw those away. And I always, I don't buy them from any in general. I just get the Nordlocks from uh, uh, McMaster Car. You get 20 sets for, I think, less than 20 bucks. And it's, it's a lot cheaper than buying them from like HPG or Adventure Accessories. And I keep a lot of these on hand. And, uh, you know, they, they're uh, cheap to replace and you want to do that. So I got the tie rod loose from the gear hub and uh, that was actually pretty easy to take off because they were just replaced literally like two months ago. This is the uh, uh, the new tie rod ends, they call them the Moog uh, Problem Solvers. I got these from HPG and they call them the Problem Solvers because they took and created like an 11 half degree angle on this to kind of uh, correct your geometry a little bit which makes it a lot nicer. But up here at the top end they did the same thing. They put that 11 and a half degree angle on there, but I'm not real happy with the way this thing twists over. I mean, this this one up here should have uh, stayed straight because you can see it's it's real far away from the boot up here and it's kind of compressed here. They should have left this one alone and just used the original AM General straight one. And I went ahead and ordered a couple straight ones that I'm going to replace this while I have it apart. I just don't like the way that looks. I don't think that's correct, and I'm not sure if. Uh, anybody's aware of that but the geometry just doesn't look right I replaced the uh, the drag link and I replaced the uh, Isler arm and the Pittman arm and all that stuff and when I put this on I was kind of disappointed in uh, in how it fits so uh, I'm gonna change that back to the straight one I don't know if anybody else is having that problem or if they even noticed it but that doesn't look right to me now that the uh, tie rod is loose now you can pivot your gearbox to one side and it's really funny that the Hummer service manual covers everything about doing this step by step, but they completely failed to mention uh, to take the CTS line off, uh, you know, as part of taking the gear hub out. So these come off real easy. You can turn this hub to get better access to it. And these are swivels, even though they get kind of crusty. So you don't want to do this and, and twist your line. You want to hold the back one, and then you can just sit there and just work that out of the back of the gear hub. And then it comes out pretty easy. And uh, yeah, it's funny how um, the manual just completely did not mention taking this off. And I've got the manual for my year, so uh, I found that kind of odd. So another thing about doing jobs like this, having the right tools is, uh, you know, instrumental. So I ended up buying this OTC front end service kit uh, kit number 6295 and this thing is great for all the oversized uh, pitman arms steering linkage I mean ball joints this thing is versatile versatile enough to where it can uh, handle just about anything you're doing on your H1 now when taking out the uh, upper ball joint now that the half shaft is gone you can uh, you can use this one out of the kit which actually fits uh, really nice up in here a lot of people tell you, ah, just use a pickle fork and get in there and just pound that thing. It'll come right out. But these ball joints are brand new. They've only been in here like probably not even two months. And I really don't want to destroy that rubber boot and have to go back and replace those. So this tool is actually really perfect on this truck to uh, slip right under that boot and uh, get a nice firm grip. And on the bottom of the stud, there's a little groove there for... Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's there's a little groove there for where the cutter can 
pin goes through. And then this has kind of a point on it. So if I mash that up in there, it's going to deform that, that cotter key slot. So it's really easy just to take a, a little washer like this, a little 5 16 washer, put it on top of that cone. And then when you go to run this up, if you can do it without dropping it, run this up and uh, sandwich that washer in there. And then you don't have to worry about, uh, it gives you a flat surface and it, uh, you don't have to worry about destroying that bottom of that ball joint because if I was just going to take these out and throw them away, I wouldn't care. But like I said, these are brand new, don't want to damage anything. So I'm just taking the time to try to take it apart as careful as possible. Okay, learning curve 101. When the uh, upper ball joint let go, I wasn't expecting the arm, the uh, upper control arm, to jump upwards as much as it did. But uh, it did, and it allowed the, uh, the gear hub to come down. So it might have been helpful to have my uh, new fixture attached before I took the upper ball joint off. But hey, I've got three more to go after this, so uh, we're going to try to get this thing on here. Now, just like that, to hold it up. And I cut a couple of flange nuts to keep that on there. I'll tighten those up. And now I can take the uh, now I can take the lower lower ball joint off, and that uh, should be able to just lower down and uh, come right out. This is a Harbor Freight hydraulic cart, so um, it's a height adjustable. It should have the range to do what I needed to do, and also uh, this. Uh, fixture tilts back 90 degrees so once I get the gear hub off it will become a work platform for rebuilding the gear hub so we'll get this uh we'll get this other nut off the bottom punch that uh, ball joint out and see how this looks okay now that fixture is holding the entire weight of that gear hub so now I'm going to lower this table and tilt it back and see if we can just get that gear hub to slip out from underneath that ball joint Okay, there it is. It came out. So uh, not as smooth as I anticipated, but um, still going to do the job. Now what's nice about this table is it will come up to a nice workbench height. And I'll be able to pull those threaded rods out of there. And then uh, this thing will go flat. and I'll be able to do the rebuild on it. All right, we'll catch up in a little bit. Okay, folks, so all in all, I would say that the, uh, the fixture was a success. It didn't come out as smooth as I wanted to because most cases that ball joint uh, rubs on the back of this uh, steering arm cover and it's just, it's weird getting the angle right to get that thing to drop out of there. And uh, with all the rods taken out of the fixture, uh, now if I had to, I can put a 3 8 bolt on both sides. I can bolt this thing down because when you go to torque this, uh, this axle nut, then uh, it's important not to have this thing flip around all over the place. But um, now I can uh, finish taking it apart, uh, do the 12K upgrade kit, uh, clean it, paint it, and um, put it all back together, and then do th three more.